So today, manual swap. <laughs> uh, this is a, what is it, a 2004, I think? 325i sport package, auto touring. This was bought by a friend of mine because finding a manual sport package touring in good condition is very difficult. And he happened upon this car in California and had it shipped back. Um, normally the 325i has a Getrag 250 manual. However, the uh, Getrag is kind of a weak transmission, so we're going to go ahead and put a ZF in it. And I'll kind of go over um, parts donors, what you need from which car. So, what I've got here, as far as BMW parts, that's a ZF 310Z. That one's out of a 98 328i four-door. I've got a standard E46 self-adjusting clutch and flywheel here. This is okay to reuse. It's about three quarters used up according to the self-adjusting mechanism there. However, I'm going to replace it because self-adjusting clutches are just kind of tough to deal with. The flywheel is still completely fine to use, but we're going to take the pressure plate and clutch disc off and reuse, I'm sorry, install a new Luke rep set. Um, this drive shaft is from a 2000 E46 328i. Uh, you cannot use a 330 drive shaft on the swap because the 325, 323, and 328 have a four bolt rear, 330s have six bolt. And the only configuration that we got in this country with a ZF manual in the four bolt rear end is the 99 and 320, or er, sorry, 99 and 2000 328i. Bigger 92 millimeter flex disc, four bolt rear. Um, the shifter arm assembly, you can use a 330 or a 328. Rear wheel drive E46, two door or four door, doesn't matter. Clutch lines, anything will work, as long as it's from an E46. Pedal box, any E46 manual. Uh, that one's out of a 2003 330i. Um, master cylinder, it's the new master cylinder style. It's got a new Hall Effect clutch switch on it. Um, and then it also has a modified adapter lead harness on it. Uh, rear K member, 328 or 330 E46. Um, slave cylinder, basically anything post 1992 in a lot of applications. Um, all the same. I ordered one for a 2000 328i. Uh, shifter hardware. Customer ordered just the ECS tuning. I'm not plugging them, but <laughs> you can get these parts anywhere. Um, I'd probably get them through Blunt Tech. They're a little bit cheaper. Here's the, uh, the full kit. This piece right here. That right there on the transmission. Nice and easy to change. This is a Delrin style bushing that's going to go in the end of our aluminum shifter rod there. This is the new chassis bushing. This will just be straight up installed because uh, the automatic car doesn't have one of these. New clips, new shifter cup. Um, what you're not seeing is I have a Z3 shifter selector rod in my parts bin. I have to dig that out. Um, we're also running a BMW Motorsports Alcantara shift boot and a ZHP 5-speed shift knob. Um, but unfortunately the boot and the knob are not here at the shop right now because poor planning. So, uh, first step for me is going to be just get the car up in the air and then I'm probably going to drain transmission fluid and get the exhaust off. So here's our exhaust system. These are, depending on how rusted yours are, between 15 and 13 millimeter. I usually start on a 15, sometimes end up down on a 14. Um, this is the mid pipe. Nothing you have to deal with here. This is just a brace piece here. This one, however, is load bearing. So you're gonna have to take both of those off. And then in back here, got 13 millimeters the other two right there so really not too bad as long as your front nuts come off and then this car I was told has a ZF transmission but it is indeed a GM so this has zero value because they're actually very reliable transmissions these 5L 40Es um, here is the bottom side of your shift linkage that's a 13 you just loosen that up and then once it's got enough slack in it this rod will just slide right out along with those two 10 millimeters up there holding on the side of the trans. 
Uh, there's also a 13 up there holding your transmission cooler lines and an e-plug right there. So um, really none of that's too bad. You will also have to take off this chassis brace if your car has one. Um, you won't see that, at least this style, on an earlier car. They'll be uh, steel and you can work around them on the early cars. So uh, a couple of quarter turn Phillips screws up there and then these are, I believe, I think those are 16 millimeter. So zip those off and then uh, that'll give us enough access to actually get that rubber flap open and take the torque converter nuts out to get the transmission off. And here you can see four bolt rear on a 2004 325i. These are not CV cars. So I've got the exhaust off. California car, boy did that come off nicely. Uh, bottom here, looks like we probably have a T, oh I don't know, 40 for the drain on the pan. And then, like I said, you've got the two tens holding the linkage. And you got the 13 uh, on the linkage itself, 13 up here. Make sure you have a drain pan ready for all that. Once it's drained, quarter turn e-plug comes right off. Um, then you have 10 mils that hold this entire heat shield on, which we're gonna drop as well. And then there are two 13 mil nuts, and then there are four 13 mil bolts on the perimeter. That'll drop down. And then we also, in the front here, these cats are a little hot, so pardon me. I might not be able to do this right now. That rubber plug comes off, and then we are going to have to actually take this front plastic piece off as well, get a 22 mil on the front of the engine, and rotate it over while we find the 17 millimeter torque converter bolts to remove those as well. So there we are, draining the Pentosin ATF-1 out of this transmission far better than it deserves. Uh, these run pretty well just fine on hydromatic. <laughs> it's just noticing, look how destroyed those transmission mounts are though. Wow. Hopefully I got another set on some other transmission, otherwise we have to reuse those. Anyway, we shall see. Next up, linkages, and then uh, I'll put the drain plug back in. We'll go looking for the torque converter. I did take the heat shield off. It's just two 13 mils in the middle and then the e-torx on the back. So the cooler lines are off. Transmission linkage is separated. Uh, use a stubby 10 mil on a quarter drive ratchet for that. Use a box end ratcheting 13 for that. Use a stubby quarter drive 13 for that. And they should just pull right out because they're O-ring. Um, now what I'm going to do next is actually, also make sure your trans is in neutral. I just instinctively do that when I'm doing a swap, so this is. We're going to pull off this plug, now we're going to take off the remaining quarter turn Phillips screws here. Get to the front of the crank, put a 22 box wrench on that, and we're going to rotate the engine around clockwise, looking at it, the front. Um, until we see 17 mils. There's going to be three of them in there, offset a third of a circle apart, and uh, we're going to impact those out. So the grommet's out. I've got my 22 on the front, and now in real time, I'm going to see if I can rotate this over. Look at that! There's one of our 17s in there. So there's going to be three of those. Um, it's a little tricky to get the extensions and wobble up there, but once you get it up, it's really not too bad. So there we have the back of the transmission with the mounts taken off. Those are uh, not reusable. Drive shaft looks fine. Uh, now we just have these 18 mils. I usually take off the, uh, whichever three are most convenient really, but you only have to take three of them off as long as they're just the three for the trans or just the three for the drive shaft. In this case, I'm not sure which one I'll do. Maybe I'll take off all of them just so I have the bolts to spare. Um, but uh, that's that's next up. Just get the 18 mil socket on there with your impact and a wobble. Get your 18 mil wrench on that side and zip them off. So there we have it. A floating GM. No drive shaft. She's ready to uh, do the dance and pull out except for this electrical connector needs to be derouted 
this one has unfortunately been zip tied. Makes it a little trickier. So I gotta cut that zip tie. But uh, once that's dangling, go around and take all the bolts off. One that will trip you up. There's a little 10 millimeter on the front side. Take that off too, otherwise it will hang up. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I've done enough of these where that has cost me hours. So there we have it. Perimeter bell housing bolts removed. Three torque converter bolts removed. Um, kind of hard to see, but you do have to make sure that the starter motor dowel pin is not attached to the transmission, otherwise that will hang you up. And also, again, do not forget that little 10 mil on this side. Um, just get your screwdriver in here, start prying a little bit, and uh, transmission should pop right off. The engine will probably tilt forward once you get the trans off. Actually, no, no, it won't. Uh, you should be fine. So just pull the trans off and should be ready to do the flex plate. So there we have it. Uh, typically, these don't fight very much, but unfortunately, the torque converter hung up uh, and started to make a huge mess. Um, the engine did indeed tilt forward, so I'm going to have to uh, go back up top and move a strap or something to make sure that's that's good going back together. Um, but really, still, it came apart all right. So, um, recollect your bell housing bolts, and uh, I'm going to get my coat on and bring this thing down to the floor. These are super heavy, so not going to be a ton of fun, but. I'm also gonna make sure the torque converter is completely reseated in there. Um, I don't want it to leak once I put it on the floor. Uh, once that's done, we're gonna come back up here and take all those 19s off of the flex plate. So take all 18, 19 millimeters, or sorry, eight, nine millimeter, <laughs> 19 millimeter, wow, tongue tied. Uh, out of there, um, we're gonna press in the new pilot bearing and then uh, you basically just hammer on the outside uh, race of the pilot bearing with like a 21 millimeter socket never on the inside race seated in there put your used flywheel on there uh, reuse the uh, Longer dual mass bolts buy new ones if you want. I reuse them. No problem. 79 foot-pounds. is what I use uh, Your mileage may vary um, Once that's done, I'm gonna throw the new clutch kit on there and then start messing with the transmission rehab kit Flywheel's on, um, make sure you get that dowel aligned with the bigger hole on the back. Time for pilot bearing. Uh, once that's done, I'm gonna hang the new clutch kit on there and install it. And there we have it. New dual mass flywheel installed, all ready to go. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda, A, get this old electrical plug out of the way so it doesn't uh, impede our progress. I'll probably chop these auto trans lines out um, and then I need to devise a way to get the back of the engine tilted down a bit um, and then kind of refresh that trans, fill it with some fluid, and then we'll pretty much be ready to go here uh, to slap it in. Before I slap the trans in though, I'm probably going to at least take apart the interior a little bit, get that clutch line in there, uh, just because it's kind of easier to work without a transmission in the way. So, way back down in there is where the hole is in the uh, car for the clutch line. That's generally the first thing I do once I pull back the carpet inside. Uh, next up is going to be the pedal box, which is just a 13 there, a 13 on the side, and a 13 on the top. Do make sure you unplug the brake switch first, and then uh, yeah, just zip that whole assembly right out of there. It's always a good sign when you put the carpet back and the line is out in the right spot. So there's the automatic assembly, there's the manual assembly. So I've got the slave cylinder hooked up now. I'm going to drop the car back down and put the uh, hose on the brake fluid reservoir so I can bleed this out before I put the trans in. So here you can see the clutch feed hose I got up here and what I'm going to do is show you in real time what you got to do. Take your dike, snip, and insert that. Alright, now you have uh, brake fluid in your clutch system. I'm going to reconnect the brake booster, I just pulled that out to show you. 
So here we have the E46 carrier arm. I got the old bushing out, the new Delrin two-piece bushings in. Trans is ready to go, lubed up, new uh, release bearing in there. It's time to put this uh, rubber carrier mount into the car. Um, yeah, so luckily BMW actually put a provision for this in the non-M cars with automatics. It's right there. So the key to this, there's a little horizontal groove on the side there. You want to get that up in to the little teeth on one side and then you're gonna have to push uh, with like all your might and then probably some some additional force from some implement and snap it in on the other side as well well that's definitely one of the worst parts of the whole job but uh, it's done so now I'm uh, gonna double check the trans make sure it's all good and then I'm gonna throw it on the engine here so since this was a junkyard transmission, going ahead and filling it up with some new Redline MT90. Uh, these recommend ATF, any old ATF will do. Uh, I put MT90 in just because that's what I like. It is an ATF based fluid, so seems to work pretty well. A lot of people like uh, Redline D4. Some people like a mixture of D4 and MTL. Either way, it, uh, as long as there's fluid in it. <laughs> Uh, ignore the lifetime oil change. That's total bullshit. So I'm just going to fill it up. These take like 1.3 liters of fluid when they're dry, I think. Maybe it's not even that much. But uh, going to fill her up. I got the slave all mounted up there. Um, still haven't put in any of the linkage. So I don't know. Uh, I think that's probably next up. I have to do all the linkage before I can put the mounts in and all that sort of stuff. So. After I'm done filling up the transmission here, once it starts overflowing out the side, I'm going to cap the trans, drop the car, and go back inside uh, just to kind of take a look at stuff and uh, get her done. Pretty simple on this. You just need a Torx T30, three Torx, a single 10 mil you loosen, and then while it's in park, you're able to remove this uh, ignition cylinder lock cable. And then the rest of it just comes right out. Um, you will have to do a little fiddling with the uh, shifter linkage cable to get that, um, what am I saying? It's a little bit too big to fit through that hole. So you're gonna have to unbolt it on the bottom and then pass it through. So there we have it. The linkage is installed on both ends. Pitch clips up in there. I still do have to install the uh, selector rod and the shifter. Um, I'll do that in just a moment here, but I'm gonna lower the car back down go inside remove the rest of the automatic shifter and reassemble the center console um, As well as probably do the interior wiring So we have the new socket The new z3 1.9 shift lever and a used e46 vapor barrier piece um, to assemble this there is It'll be tough to do this and show you at the same time. You can see there's kind of a square shape in the back of it here. You gotta assemble it through that way and click the white cup onto the shifter. Then get one of these tabs aligned with the side of it. So you can see I've got both the tabs on the sides. And there you go. Make sure the bend is pointing toward you. Um, and then this just pushes really hard over the top of the shifter. That's gonna just take twisting and pushing and a whole bunch of finesse to get it in there, but it'll go. Well, that shifter is going to feel absolutely like new. I had to use a vice grip just to get enough force to get that clip on there. So I have some really good used uh, trans mounts, which thank goodness I have, because you all saw the state of the automatic trans mounts I normally reuse. So just click those in there, tighten them down, get the uh, new manual K member on there. Next up for me is gonna be align that drive shaft alignment marks, get it bolted into the diff, uh, get it bolted into the center, 
trans, throw it on up there, cut the AT lines out, uh, put the heat shield back up, put the exhaust back on, and then finish up inside. It's kind of the order of operations here. <laughs> so I've got the exhaust back on. That would be a nightmare without this machine. Uh, I do still have to tighten down these 15s here. Uh, I still have to put in this lower aluminum brace, the front plastic splash guard, and then uh, these lines I'm taking out as well. So getting pretty close, but uh, still a few things yet to do bottom side. And then I'll show you guys the wiring again. Uh, I've gone over that quite a bit in my older videos, but hey, never hurts. So once again, um, the blue computer here is the auto trans computer. Go ahead and leave that plugged in until after you're done being coded. Uh, there are a few plugs, I think five plugs on the CCU. The end one's for ignition coils. The second one in contains the, the wire we need to add, which is pin 23 on the black plug, not the gray one. Just slide in one of these terminal connectors. They're available from BMW. Uh, Google it for part numbers. I don't have them handy. But that's pin 23, and we're going to basically extend this run it down into the car through that hole where we ran the clutch line, which is the factory location. And this is going to be switched ground for our cruise control to make sure that safety switch still works. Come on, focus. Good enough, you get the gist. So I'm under the driver's side dash here. That white box is your EWS immobilizer module. We've got another short wire lead now, which comes from pin eight. And uh, we're gonna do some connecting here. So this is the plug for your brake light switch. So brown, black is ground. Purple, yellow is switched 12 volt. We're gonna need those. And here on this clutch switch, looks like purple, yellow. We're gonna match with that switch. Oh, sorry guys for the shaky video here. Uh, looks like it's a solid blue. No, blue with the black stripe. That's gonna go to our EWS wire right here. That leaves us with two others, brown black, which we connect to brown black on the brake light plug. And then this uh, blue brown here, which is what we connect to this wire, we ran through the firewall to the ECU. So what that's doing is when you push in the clutch pedal, A, it sends ground to the computer to shut off cruise control to keep your engine from revving up, and B, it sends switched 12 volt to the immobilizer box to let the car crank over and start. So there we are. Immobilizer. And then I've got the uh, wire from the ECU back there. There we've got our wire colors. Oh, I'm actually gonna try it. Firing it up here. So it shouldn't start without your foot on the clutch. But it should start. Aha, still have to do the exhaust nuts. But anyway, there you go. Fires right up. Just uh, one more thing after that. You gotta cut the hole right here on this outline for a clutch pedal. That's it. Another one in the books.